Uh, this is a regular scheduled meeting of the Franklin Township Environmental Commission. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, ACTPL 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting has been posted. Roll call. Maria Santiago Valentin. Maria? I'm here. Okay, go. I'm here. <laughs> All right, thank you. Diane Podesky. Diane is no longer a member. I didn't know that. I, I, oh, come I saw on. something. Wait, well, we'll talk about that later. Robin Sudan. Here. Uh, Honor Smith. Still a member. Okay. <laughs> Stan. Yaraj, yes, I'm here. Okay. Walter Andrews here. Paul Walensky. Paul Where Walensky. Paul? Oh, I see him, but I texted him. Hmm. Ted Chase? Yeah. Okay, Jessica Johnson, of course, we she sent us an email saying that she was ill and couldn't be on. So we're still waiting for Paul. Oh, my Just goodness. calling him. I just tried calling Paul and got his voice. No, now. no, he's 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 oh, he's just logging. Okay. Okay. Actually, I can now make Maria panelist because she joined. All right. Beautiful. But we are already, we have already started, so maybe we should. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right, great. Um, Chair report. Okay. Uh, in terms of the um, chair report, not much to report. You know, uh, um, did a lot of searching to try to see where everybody is, uh, you know, other ECs and uh, agencies and departments are with regard to preparing for the uh, plastic bag and paper bag and plastic bag ban. And uh, so it, we made some progress. Um, I still hear rumors of Franklin Day, but nothing new. I would think, you know, if someone does tell us more we would want to be somewhat prepared or prepare very quickly but otherwise uh, you know things are moving along and uh, i sort of feel like you know we're at a point now where a lot of things are on our plate and we, we want to hopefully try to clear things off and get them moving in the right direction so that's my report for now and um, if we follow the agenda uh, the minutes of the May 5th meeting. There we go. Um, May 3rd. I'm sorry. May 3rd. <laughs> do we want um, to open to the public? Yes, we can do that. Oh, no, wait, so wait. No, no, no. We have minutes. Okay, let's. Uh, okay. okay. Um, I, I'm... Go ahead and move uh, if somebody, ha everybody has seen the minutes and are okay with them. Make a motion, a motion to approve them as they are. Okay, second. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and second that we approve the minutes, uh, May 3rd minutes, uh, as they are. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay, any abstentions? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Just remember, okay. the last version I sent you had, I think had Arnie's additions in red. So just yeah, change the color before submitting it. 
Oh, well, okay, I'll do that. Yeah, you're right. I did use that one. And uh, I'll, before for posting, I'll make sure that we change the font color. That was the version that I was making a motion to approve. Yeah, okay. Yes, that's correct. Was it after oh. May 11th? Was it? Um, it's already been moved, motion passed, and everything. So okay, fine. It is what it is. <laughs> okay. All right. I think I sent um, back to everyone. Yes, you did, Ted. Thank you, Ted. Okay. Okay. This is the um, website, email, social media. What do you want to open to the public, first Walter? We're gonna okay. Open is to that? I have a different Walter. place, but. Yes, let's do it now. Paul, uh, right. Walter, before you open to the public, I have a, a comment on the way the agenda is written. Um, yeah. You have chair report, then four is the minutes, then you have an asterisk for public discussion, and then five for the website. Um, I suggest that as currently listed, it appears that public discussion is sort of an afterthought, and it should be Roman numeral five on the agenda, just like um, at the end, public dis discussion is Roman numeral nine. So I suggest in the future that the agenda reflect um, that public discussion be agenda item number Roman numeral five. Just my suggestion. I support that. Yeah. Okay. If that's general agreement, that's the way it will be going forward. Okay. And. And we, so we will end up with, before we get into new business, we will have. Okay, so uh, I move to six... open to public. Okay, all right. Uh, was there a motion to open to the public? Yeah, I just, oh, I, was... I just moved, yeah. Okay, okay, I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and second that we open a meeting to the public. All in favor of it by saying aye. 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 Oh, any opposed? Okay, open the meeting. Thank you. Uh, Franklin reported you are on mute. I'm good, thanks. thanks All right. For staying with us. Uh, I move to close the public meeting. Second. second. It's been moved and second that we close the public discussion of public meeting to the public. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Say no. Okay, the meeting yeah. is now closed to the public. Okay, and if we. Um, as I said, website, email, social media, Jessica usually handled that. Um, but just for your information, as a result of last meeting, we had gotten a an email from uh, a student at the Rutgers Prep. And we online with Jessica wrote a quick response to that individual suggesting that they uh, clean up, you know, and try to quantify the plastic in their area. However, I said, you know, let's wait and talk to upper management to make sure that no liability issues because these are high school students. And I sent a letter to, um, to, uh, who does it? To? No, to Mark Healy, actually. Mark Healy. And he hasn't responded. He said he was out last Thursday and Friday, and I looked today to see if there was a response, and I didn't see one. So I would like to, you know, just wait another day to see if he does respond. I decided to send it to him because I think, you know, he, he, he's sort of our, I guess, is it the um, our liaison. Uh, is it the technical liaison that he is, or administrative? But nevertheless, yeah. yeah. So let's just wait and see if he respond. I when I check. I guess around two o'clock. I hadn't seen anything. I don't know where anybody is. Yeah, Walter. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, when Jessica responded to uh, Christian, I think his name. Yeah, that's the name. Uh, I was uh, hoping that and and referring to me that I will coordinate, and uh, I was kind of hoping that he will confirm his interest and respond. And there was no no response. So um, I was hoping the same thing. You know, I. I guess I could have written the letter to him that night, but I did not. And of course, you know, I was hoping he would be in last Thursday and Friday, but he was not, and he hasn't responded today. Yeah. So we are caught in a sort of unfortunate delay. 
So I, I just hope that the next and, uh, our fellow students don't lose interest. And it is an okay, you know, with whatever qualifiers that he recommends. And uh, so I wanted to let you know that's what happened regarding that particular one. And um, the, I guess the correspondence regarding Bob, Bob Bonlocker and uh, his response to bringing Amy Spears on in one way or another, uh, he said it had to depend on the budget meeting. Ted, when is the budget meeting? But you were saying even after you have a meeting and the budget is okay, there's yes. still a 30 day lapse for other actions. Is yeah. that correct? The, mm -hmm. the budget was supposed to be officially introduced uh, at last Tuesday's meeting. Unfortunately, the, there was a um, now, I guess it had been introduced. There was supposed to be a public hearing and passage, but somehow it didn't get properly advertised in time. So we couldn't, the council could not act on it um, last Tuesday. They had a public hearing and nobody commented. <laughs> uh, so well, we'll there, have another public hearing at the next council meeting next week and act on it then. And then it's 20 days after that before money can be spent. Walter, I have a question. Yeah. Amy was interested in an unpaid internship. And I think this kind of got mixed up with the possibility of hiring her part time to do some VCs things. I just don't see why her internship unpaid is dependent upon budget initiatives. Well, that's how Bob explained it to me because he has a sort of a reorganization plan and he has uh, her internship intermingle with the way things are set up. And he's saying, you know, I, this is my idea but I really can't move it forward or do anything else and tell you more details until this budget thing passes. So okay. it seems that he certainly knew that it was an unpaid intern, but uh, it, I suppose it, there's some type of responsibility or somehow he wanted to make sure she was placed in one of the boxes in the, in the, in the structure for the time that she's in the internship. Okay. So. It's uh, I, I, it's unclear to me, and I hate we lose her because yeah. we're taking so long to do something yeah. so simple. I agree. I, I know. Well, he told me that his plan was to give Tara Kenyon another ten thousand dollars and have her be the liaison to Bob Hornlocker and attend meetings. So he may have in mind that then Amy Spears would report to Tara Kenyon, but until the budget is passed, you know, Tara Kenyon isn't there, so nothing can be done. I'm just surmising from what I do know. Yeah, yeah. that sounds about right. Yeah. Ted, I'm trying to follow that. Are you saying that for her, for Tan, ta, uh, Tara, to be our liaison, uh, Bob Warnlocker is looking to add ten thousand dollars to her salary. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I I can't swear to the ten thousand dollars. Pardon me. It it may be just because actually she is paid by the hour. Which uh, it's more likely that she'd be paid by the hour for doing environmental commission business and attending meetings and the $10,000 is an upper limit. So what exactly have we have we figured out like what that job description would be of hers to be a liaison to the Franklin Township Environmental Commission? Well, I think uh, Bob, I think Bob Bornlocker thinks he's figuring it out. But I think I understand that he's the boss and he's the one that comes up with that. But I think as the environmental commission, 
we're the ones that should know what it is that we think we need if we're going to need a liaison such as that. And so I would think we would want to have some kind of input in that um, instead of somebody just telling us, well, she's going to come on and start doing this, that, and the other thing. And we say, well, that's not something that we really need. And so why are we paying somebody to, well, to do that? Arnie, earlier in the year, there, there was complaint that all the other commissions have a township employee attend their meetings and be the conduit to the manager and the environmental commission didn't have one and why not? So now if we're getting one, don't bite the hand that feeds. Right. Well, I, I certainly I have to say that I was not a person that was complaining about that because we have you as a liaison we have who comes to the meeting. You're not a township employee. We understand that you're a council member and we have Mark Healy who doesn't come to the meetings um, unless we ask him to. And he is and, and and he is um, our township liaison in that respect. Um, but I think in a time of, you know, where we're looking to, to pay somebody to do this, uh, you know, at one point somebody said, well, why don't we we can have her do the minutes, which I thought was totally ridiculous for her to spend time doing the minutes when that's something that Ted you've been doing and I think you enjoy it. And uh, why would we take that away from you unless you didn't want to do it anymore? So maybe there is stuff that Tara can do for us, but I really think it needs to be, uh, you know, something that is discussed. Uh, I see a lot of hands up. I'll be done in a second. Um, it's it's something that um, if if Bob comes back to us and says this is what uh, Tara is going to do for us. I really think it's something that should be discussed on our end and decide whether these are things that really are things that we need. I mean, if she was going to be, you know, we, we've talked about um, having a sustainable, what do you call it? Um, sustainability, uh, officer. Sustainability, sustainability officer. Sustainability officer and a grants coordinator combined. I mean, if she was going to be doing that, I'd be all for it. Um, but, um, I, I, I'd like to know more about this before all of a sudden it's decided that, you know, she's going to get being paid up to $10,000 more for the environmental commission for things that we just don't even know if we need it. Yeah. Um, Paul, go ahead. I'll go ahead. For uh, you. I was just, just going to say that my thought was that this is the beginnings of the sustainability officer. That's where this came from. And I think that's where this is going. That the $10,000 will be, we, we can set the agenda for her, but she's gonna be what we wanted. At least part time to start with, and that'll, that's how you grow it. Well, if she, it, but, but it sounds like Bob Warnlocker is going to set that agenda. And maybe the agenda that he sets will be what it is that we're looking for, but we don't know. I think it would be worthwhile having that discussion before something is finalized. Um, I, this is Robin. I agree with Paul that I think this is Vornlocker's way of dipping his toe in the water, that it's yeah. easier to get incremental increases rather than a, a big shot. We have made it clear that we're disappointed we weren't getting timely responses from township staff and that we really didn't have a reliable one single conduit and I I think Ted is right. Those were my wishes, my yeah. my um, sense of what was missing for us to be more effective. And I think having Tara to do this will be helpful. And I do agree with Arnie that we should try to quantify what we'd like her to do for us so that someone's going to give her a, a job description or a list of expectations. I would imagine with this new assignment, and I think for us to have input into that is timely and appropriate. Yeah. I, I think that, um, thank you for that, Robin. And, and I think that some of um, our issues were not necessarily only getting responses from township uh, people, but 
maybe even more so um, just not getting responses that we wanted to hear about certain things um, because of the way things are done in the township. And I'm not saying we're right, uh, right or wrong about that, but you know, we get, we put ask for something and we're told, no, that's not the way things are done. Um, or I, so I had emails that went unanswered. I know Ted asked things on our behalf that went unanswered. It took the third try in several right. cases. So, well, some of that depends on the specific person that you're sending it to. There are some people that are extremely good. Some township people, I will name Mark Healy, who is just spectacular, I think, township employee who responds immediately with more information than you could uh, uh, believe. And he's always been great. And then there are some that will go unnamed that have not been as good. Well, I'm I'm pleased to hear that that's in the works, and I look forward to working with Tara. I agree. I think that's that's what my sentiments were. That this is the first step in getting to the sustainability officer, and we and we can shape. We can certainly shape where we think it's going to go, and and see what happens. And I will throw in again that not only a sustainability officer, but a sustainability officer slants slant grants coordinator which once we did have in bonnie von olin who hasn't been replaced and again a grants coordinator um is somebody that can be extremely beneficial to the whole township not to the only to, only to the environmental commission well tara has prepared and gotten grants mm -hmm. for the township i mean most notably $20,000 from Sustainable Jersey for this uh, green infrastructure mm -hmm. study. Yep. So in effect, at least for the environmental side, she is doing that. Yeah, that sounds yeah. like it's already a part of her job mm -hmm. description. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and well. I um, saw yeah. the agenda for the open space meeting tomorrow and there's something on there about extending the um, bike path along Van Cleef Lane and that may involve getting a grant and I certainly intend to talk about the, uh, the plan for the north-south bicycle trail but I'm just giving examples of where we need grants. Okay. All right, and there, there apparently is grant money, uh, money available to townships regarding the rollout of the plastic uh, plastic bag and, and paper bag ban. I don't know exactly what the details are, but that's something we certainly should keep our eye on uh, as, as we move forward. Uh, yeah, I did in, in some of the discussion, I don't know how it, you know, when Bob talks, you know, he goes very fast and changes direction. But I, I did hear the word sustainability officer. Now, I don't know what his concept of it is, but if, if we want to develop what we might think is a draft, uh, uh, you know, I'll call it a PD, a position description, and just hold it in a band or float it around. And, uh, but, you know, I think a lot of that already exists, but it would take one or two people to sort of put it together into one document. And uh, maybe we can sort of shape how how this, uh, you know, yep. rolls out or at least be prepared uh, to respond with whatever Bob comes forward with. Is there anyone who thinks that they had the time to uh, put together a draft PD or a list of expectations? Uh, I know we had looked at the, the duties of some others, EC as sustainability officers. All right, well, <laughs> uh, so look, we, are, we are at least uh, 30 days or more away, but so if maybe what I'll do is see what I can do uh, as a draft and, 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 you know, put it out there and let everybody sort of comment feedback on that. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, we could we could we could do the opposite, Walter. If they're yeah. thinking about hiring her, ask Bob what they're intending, and could we comment on that? 
I agree with Robin. I think that's the best way to go. So we're kind of flattering him. We're not taking away his control, but it it is well, asking politely for input. Yeah, well, he talked to this, you know, I guess in terms of uh, public discussion and the way things are done, you can only go so far until you have the budget approved, you know. So I don't know if a PD at this point is something that he feels can be a part of a discussion or he wants to wait until later, but there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, asking him if that's possible. Uh, I don't know, Ted, have you seen any of these type actions uh, in the past, how it, how they sort of rolled out? No. No, okay, all right. Uh, I mean, you know, you meant with him about this, you know yeah. more than I do. <laughs> and if he didn't tell you, no. What can we do? Yeah, exactly. He he was very said my hands are tied until you know I have this idea and it's my idea, but and I'm the city manager, but until it's approved by the council and whoever else, uh, you know I that's about as much as I can do right now. So maybe I'll see if I can figure out a way to to uh, float that question in a way that you know he. He might respond to it. So, if not, well, we can. Anybody else want to comment on where we are with that? And before we move on to the next uh, plans review, as I said, I'll I'll try to among a group of us put together what uh, I think might be uh, a reasonable PD. But I don't know how much uh, ten thousand buys us. <laughs> But the idea that quality wise, uh, you know, it would be there in terms of how much we actually do. That's another question. And we can at the next meeting sort of take it up again. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good, Walter. All right. Yeah. Very good. What you think a sustainability offer should be doing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we'll see how much we get of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I regard to some extent, and this is from observing, talking with David Coe's thing in Hillsboro, uh, and I know uh, Robin has talked with Gray, whatever his name is from Montclair. Uh, and Stan as well. Yeah. No. That, uh, uh, it, it, Russ, Russell. Uh, Gray Russell, yeah. It should be someone who will sort of talk to everybody necessary in the township about what has to be done towards sustainability. Yeah. And yeah. Different people have different roles. Okay. All right. Well, well thanks for, you know, the, the cautionary note and uh, the heads up. And um, so with what we plan, we'll see if we can uh, move a little closer to where we hope to be or want to be in the next meeting. Okay, if, if nothing else, if we go on to plans review, we have sort of a different process. Now we ask Paul to go in and uh, <laughs> sort, sort out any that we haven't commented on it, but things seem to be sort of slowed down. But Paul, what's the latest? Well, there, there are a few things. Jess, I want to give a quick review of some things that are on the agenda and then talk about two new items. All right. Um, the the uh, And I've seen that our environmental comments are getting posted along with these applications. And All right. some of the things that have passed, I see some influence of that. So I think that was a good thing. Okay. Um, the the um, Sterling Point application for the 60 uh, family units that they want to add to the existing Sterling Point, evidently they hired someone to review what was done before and whether it's still applicable. And that, that report is now posted. So that, that was something that we asked for. And basically- it's during that Wednesday. Yeah, yes, that's why I mentioned it. It's the first, that, that's the first one that's come up. Um, then there's a Hamilton Street management. They just need some parking relief because one of the vacant stores wants to be a pharmacy and the pharmacy hours, they, the way it's written, they can't be open on Saturday. Well, that, that would kill a pharmacy. 
<laughs> so they got to they have to uh, fix fix that one. Um, there are some new ones. Um, Saint Charbel Maronite Church um, at the corner of uh, Franklin Boulevard and Easton intends to demolish the church and rebuild as a new one. And wow. uh, demolish and rebuild. Uh, and the comment, the first comment I was going to put, of course, is one we've always said is pervious asphalt for the parking lot, which they wouldn't have had now. But the second one came out of some agreements I saw with one of the warehouses. One of the warehouses has agreed to put in an electric charging station. The the council wow. wanted two, and they agreed on one. So I'm Very gonna, good. what I'd like to do. I thought you'd like that thing. <laughs> um, I'm going to recommend. I uh, recommend for the church that they do the same thing. You know, why not? You're building a new building, new parking lot area, yeah. put a charging station in. Wouldn't hurt to ask. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. How about, how about more than one charging station? Well, they, we can start with two and it leaves them room if they only want one. You're right. You're right. Well, I, th the, the, I think the thing to do is ask for, well, typically it would be a double charging yeah. station right that could charge two cars but also enough wiring so that later more can be installed uh, for future how, expansion yes. yeah. how much this would be done at a church people are not there all day the way they are at yeah this is no place to go for a charge you know yeah i mean if the pastor that, is that there. is not necessarily true guys i'm yeah. very active in my church and we spend <laughs> right. a lot of time the yeah. same thing with the temple is that you know? so okay yeah, no, 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 the charging no, station. Station. i'm gonna put i'm gonna put that in the recommendations yeah for that the yeah. other well, the, let me, can i what, just say something about that sure the, engineers comments now routinely ask for charging stations ah okay that's why we're beginning to get them and i yes. bring it up i if they try to slip past it i bring it up in the planning board meetings but it is now becoming a, a routine request okay well we haven't done it before and now we're going to do it yeah. yeah and similarly we're going to talk a little bit later about checklists but there are about four or five things that we should probably routinely be asking yeah, yeah. if we if we create a little methodology for that we right. may get more and more participation yeah. the, there's yeah. another one that's come up that we've heard before um that was tabachnik's fine foods expansion they never did build what they said they were going to build uh, back to um uh, a few years ago. So now they said we're actually going to build. It's 1230 well, Hamilton Street. Are we talking about planning board meetings or zoning board? Uh, this one is, um, it might be zoning board. I'm not what, sure. What's the eight? Is it's it a zoning on? board. ZBA 15 uh, we, Which date is it on? Um, you know? It's number three on my list. Um, it's got to be. Who, Saint Charbel Maronite Church. This is what you just mentioned. Right, and then it's, it's after that. Okay. Yeah. Seventeenth, June seventeenth. Yes. Um, so they now intend to build side, a building. Wait a second. This is uh, side of the Mandir. No, this is Tabachnik. Tabachnik. It's twelve thirty Hamilton Street is where it's located. That that other one that, that you just mentioned, I didn't see much there to to talk about. But there are no issues. Uh, did I put a date down? Uh, built uh, never built thirty one thousand square feet. Replace this with new application. Yeah, Coddington Avenue. Oh, so it's actually July first. Okay. That's way right. ahead. Yeah. Way well, ahead. but it was there. We might as well. We, me, we're not late in getting our comments in. Yes. Right. Absolutely. What? So, um, so there is some some tree uh, some things that we can done. But what I think su um, su suggesting this is a great opportunity to push a green roof. They should grow mm -hmm. herbs okay. on the roof. Do you want me to open any of those files? Let's take a look at it. Sure. 
surveys? They're going to add about 30,000 square feet. They could uh -huh. very easily grow a light crop of herbs up on the roof. Seed them. And that would give them another advertising gimmick. Homegrown. Yeah, that's true. Citrus. So I'm going to put that in. There is um, tree replacement. Um, 46 trees are replacing. And uh, they're taking out 70 and then 60% um, replacement, that kind of thing. So there is the trees already been uh, uh, considered. And again, yeah, I put in the electric charger sure. in that as well. Yeah. And Paul, do they say that for the remaining trees, they're putting money in the tree fund? Um, I think they were, but they're, they're, they're proposing 42 replacement trees. So they have environmental and, impact statement. Yeah. yeah. So and, they're taking uh, out. They're, I'm sorry. Can we just stick with the trees for a minute? They're taking out 60 trees so and re they're taking out 70 trees. And they're replacing it with 42 trees. Well, it says 40. Yes, yeah, at 43. It says 63 percent are uh, smaller and some are a little bigger. Uh, replace replacement 42 replacements. And 18 are remaining in place. So they're not taking out all the trees that are, that are on site. Okay. This so is just, they're, they're this following is, the tree. I mean, they're following the tree ordinance as it's as it's written. Well, that means that the balance has to go into the tree fund, right? Yes. Yes. I'm trying this to locate just, on the map where it is. It says Coddington. Uh, if I've got the, the notes in the right place, yeah, Coddington Avenue. Yeah. Yeah, that's parallel to Hamilton Street. You can see Tabachnik on Hamilton Street. But yeah, they make soups and stuff there, as I remember. What? Is it one of these? Uh, might be. Here's Hamilton, Bowser. Hamilton is here, right? Yeah, here's Hamilton is the red dotted line. So if it's parallel, then. Okay. It might be the one behind it, you know, lower down. Oh, here we are. Yeah. This Churchill, Delmonico, Connington. Oh, yeah, you so. can see it. There's a box outlined at the top of the right by right, Hamilton. That's it. That's it, right there in the middle, up on top. Yep. Oh, you it's made it large. Right. Good. And this is uh, Wheeler. Wheeler so Place. Wheeler. Oh, this Connington is the one behind it. So Connington runs. Con Connington evidently oh, it must look like it stops there. It's like a one way, you know, a dead end. Dead but end. it's Hamilton okay. to Coddington with Wheeler. I never go there and this is so close. What else do we More jobs, there? more taxes, and a good location. I mean, they're doing nice stuff at Tabachniks. Uh, and buy their soups. <laughs> 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 well, four, four and a half minutes and I got a bowl of soup. <laughs> All right. So I was going to put down the electric chargers and the and the asphalt again, um, and and mention the roof. I think you should. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. I mean, we had to look for opportunities where we could find them. Yeah. The the federal property, the the military, um, whatever it's called, uh, that it's further uh, down the yeah. road, closer. National Guard Armory. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. They have uh, a parking lot covered with solar panels, and they oh. do have charging station, by the way, which is not oh, very wow. Okay, so it's growing. Uh, I have no idea how long it was there because the charging station is uh, silent, kind of quiet. It's it's not public, obviously, although it's not gated, right? I'm not mm. making any suggestion. It's just. <laughs> Ted, do we know where things stand with our stormwater ordinance update? Because this plan may not have to use green infrastructure. I asked Mark and I didn't get an answer. Okay. And he, so, I asked him whether he'd send it to the county and he said, well, I have to ask the county when they want it sent. I mean, it's a question of do you have council approve it and then if the county wants changes you have to amend it or do you send it to the county first 
and that puts off the approval. Yeah. I will ask again after the uh, at the end of the planning board meeting, as I did at the end of the last planning board. Meeting. Thank, thank you for that. The response yeah, yeah. got. Okay. Okay. So that's that's my reports. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Now, I um, somehow don't have my copy of the, what's next on the agenda? Are we into the new business? Yeah, the new, that's, the, new, that's next. Okay, um, there we go. Thank you, Sam. Um, Green infrastructure planning. Yeah, we just, <laughs> I guess we've answered that one. No, that's, and, ta that's Tara's report, isn't it? Yes, yeah. And okay. She's reporting to Open Space tomorrow night, and I hope I'll get answers to some of my questions. So okay. she she was going to go back and get Rutgers final, so I maybe we'll see that in the June meeting. Well, my question was, where did all of this increased impervious surface come from? Mm -hmm. I mean, she talked, for instance, I mean, according to them. There was an increase in impervious surface in, in the Heathcote Brook shed, and I say, I know there hasn't been. Uh, Tara mentioned that one of the reasons is change in the methodology. And yeah, I this, suspect that that's all it is. Yeah, but this, this, we should then request that they should not change methodology after the, after, every time they do report, because then we cannot cross compare. Wow, you know, we have Absolutely. two reports. One that was uh, that what they should not call it an increase if it's not really an increase. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I haven't had an answer yet. All right. Okay. Okay. So if we go down to uh, the next item, the web page subcommittee. Um, we can get an update from uh, someone on that subcommittee. Who Go ahead, Robin. Is leading it, Robin. Well, we we asked you all to test drive the website. We don't have a next meeting scheduled yet with Bob okay. and Krista because we need we need material to share with them. So we have three weeks till our next meeting. If I calculate okay. correctly. And maybe everybody could try to take half hour, 45 minutes and try to pretend you're Jane or John Q public that lives in town. How does the website work for you? The environmental commissions portion of the township website. And there may be links that are broken. There may be things that just are not intuitive that you'd rather see differently. We may have missed something really important. We never included. So. So when we do the test drive, and I apologize that I kind of, well, I had some other stuff, but anyway, uh, you want to uh, get it by email to you or? Email is great, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'll share with Arnie. You can include Arnie and me and Jessica, or just send it to one of us and we'll share it with the others. But well, we, we need- We can do three of you. We've been looking at this, just the three of us, well, as well as Krista, but we really need mm -hmm. more eyes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I found something, but uh, I'll, I'll write it into email. Great, thank you. Yeah. Arnie, did oh, I do okay. anything? Uh, okay. I think you did just fine, Robert. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right, and if we move down to C, um, you know, site plan list, ordinance, or, you know, checklist. Uh, checklist, let's call it that. And uh, I know I commented and Robin has put together, she's done a lot of work there. Maybe she just want to share where she is. Yeah, well, I, we, we did get um, Mark Healy's response to us when we asked, Diane had suggested we go to Mark and say, are you using an, an environmental checklist? Maybe um, we could look at that or use it ourselves. And he was very specific in saying, you can't request an environmental checklist of applicants. Um, and I think he kind of missed our point, which was we wanted something just for our own internal. 
but he did go on to offer what Sustainable Jersey had out there, which included model checklists and model enabling ordinance. So at the last meeting, I offered to review that as well as Princeton's existing green checklist. And so what I sent you most recently is a compendium of all the questions that the four municipalities we've looked at have, as well as what Sustainable Jersey has. And then lo and behold, ANJEC, which was doing site plan workshops this summer or this spring, has a one pager, which is at the end of the document I sent you. That document is 16 pages, so it looks discour discouraging. But those are just general tips on how to review plans, which wouldn't hurt for any of us to read that anyway. It's lots of white space, lots of photos. It's not overwhelming. But they do have a one pager checklist at the back. And I thought that might be the easiest thing from which to build just an internal checklist we can all use so that when we're looking at what Paul is already partially digesting for us, which is a huge gift to all of us, we would make sure we talk about EV charges. We make sure we're talking about trees and, and come up with our own short list. So if you have the time and you can look at what I put together, that would be great if anybody else is interested in this. I think, I think Amy expressed an interest in helping with this, but she's still got this Monday night commitment, which I think will end soon. So I'll just hang out there. And if anybody says, yeah, this looks important or this is important to me, um, I'll, I'll, I'll set up a Zoom. You know, I've got a Zoom account. I can meet with anybody yeah. on Zoom whenever. I okay. think Mark also was very specific about saying that he thought it would be an excellent idea for the Environmental Commission to have their own internal right. checklist. But he, he didn't give us anything that they use, which would have been helpful, just as Ted brought up a little while ago, that they're now asking for what EV charging stations there are. If we knew the kind of questions they're asking, and maybe there's another way to get that, um, that might be helpful to us. Yeah. And that was actually from the engineer, not from I'm sorry, the from, from the engineers, right. if we had right. what what's on their list that they're asking for. That might be helpful for us. So, okay. That's it. Good. All right. Um, so we have I, I will certainly ask for charging stations at the apartment buildings that Sterling Point wants to build because uh, I think it is going to be crucial to the adoption of electric vehicles of course my family yeah. housing have charging stations yes okay. and you want to charge as you sleep and those, those uh, apartments will be in the same socioeconomic zone as canal walk and somerset run and the other houses oh. in sterling so the the um more expensive electric cars will be an option there and this would be a, a good way because as a multi-story they don't have individual things they could put the charging stations in the basement because there's always there's going to be parking underneath i presume like the other multi-story buildings are well hamilton street apartment buildings oh that's the uh, no i'm thinking of the stowing point ones yeah yeah i know but they might not bother to have their parking in the basement uh since we're talking about electric charging stations i would just like to add uh here that um our mayor has now joined the electric side and he is now driving an electric uh an ev electric vehicle well yeah. Yeah, he told me he was doing that because he thought it was cool. It wasn't really for an environmental purpose. Yet, but, he said, but if that helps you the environment, the so car much car. better. For whatever reason, it works. Right. Um, Are Paul, you talking you know, about Kramer? Yes. Yes. What is he driving? He's driving a, a Tesla. Oh, is that so? <laughs> 
Wow, that's great. I guess that's the reason why now the charging station uh, in a uh, library is uh, much cheaper. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, it's no longer two dollars ten cents per hour. Now it's one dollar. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, My well, goodness. Well, you, brought up, you brought up the socioeconomic level of Sterling Point. Right. Which makes us, I think, compels us to help support whatever way we can that we make electric vehicle charging possible for the people who live in the other end of town, so to speak. Yes. No, so, that, so they're incented to go buy an EV because the prices will be coming down. There'll be more incentives from the state and the feds. And I know Stan has had some clever things that he has shared with us, but we should all keep our eyes and ears open. And are there ways that we as the EC can promote that? Yeah. So that in yeah. in certain wards in the township, it's not out of the question. It could yeah. be a possibility. Yeah. yeah. And the the, world really, world. the, uh, the Tabachnik lo location is down toward that area. Yes. Yes. Good point. Wow. It had the the true stuff is um, east of uh, Franklin Boulevard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Franklin Boulevard. Yeah. yeah. That's that's there are lots of rental um, housing um, areas and uh, people park on the street or on shared parking lots. And when you look around, um, there are utility poles in adjacent uh, areas. Uh, and PSENG has already um, been approved by uh, Board of uh, Public Utilities to to spend uh, what was it like forty million dollars on um, charging infrastructure behind the meter. Now, putting it on the utility pole is not behind the meter, but you know, uh, everything is possible. Okay. But I will not go into details. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. But yes, it is very important uh, for uh, social equity that the people that when when the vehicles are affordable, that they can actually rake up the same benefits as the privileged people, which is bundling the driving cost with the utility bill. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think no. I think the town will help, have to help press for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they will be part of that push. Yeah. yeah. I've been thinking of writing Bonnie Watson Coleman to say that the in the great infrastructure bill should have something in there to help existing multifamily housing install yeah. Yes. Yes. Because they don't want to do it on their own. Yeah. The the property oh, owners they have no no it's, incentive. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, Ted, if you want to pen a letter and we can all sign it as members of the EC, it, sure. I'd be happy to support that. If you think additional letters would be even more effective, um, it's a very good point. That's the kind of thing uh, that you never know. It may be catalytic and make something happen and it may yeah. go nowhere. Yeah. So that would be pushed to the federal level, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's where the money is. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's right. And uh, you know, we we as I mean that's true. If the, that's true infrastructure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, all, we should always be leveraging our influence and whatever power we have in any way that we can. So, thanks, Ted. That's that's worth. And you know, that probably needs some coordination at the state level, so it becomes Boca. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Um, so in terms of the um, um, site plan review, et cetera, we, we are moving along and uh, um, we owe the committee, subcommittee, uh, some of our responses. So if you go down to DC Tree Environmental Joint Committee, subcommittee, um, who's gonna report on that? Well, we are meeting again in early June. I think it's the 4th or something like that, Arnie. I haven't popped out to my calendar. 
And, and I, I owe that committee a review of shade tree ordinances, which I have not yet done, but I will be working on in the next few weeks. So if any of you have any suggestions on improving our own tree ordinance, maybe you've talked to people in other municipalities, maybe you just have a gut feeling, please pass that along to Arnie and me so we can share that with the Shade Tree Commission. Because okay. we think there's a lot could come right out of that ordinance that really speaks to things that the EC cares about. Right. Yeah, I, I think that uh, it, well, I, I'm just saying it, but uh, sometimes uh, it, it, the, 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 sorry, I have this structure here. Okay. Uh, the, the requirement to replant trees or pay is dictated by how much trees are currently on that area of question. I think that it should not be necessarily linked to that because sometimes the trees, they naturally die and before they regrow, it should be just counted by um, the area to some point. Stan, feel it's free to send just, me an email to that effect. Yeah, okay, it's so. not just linked to the number of trees, it's also linked to their size. Yeah, yeah. Bigger the tree, the more replacement has to be put in. And I think that's a lovely idea. Mm -hmm. Particularly since the experts say that it's the bigger trees that are really taking up the CO2. Yep. And lowering the temperature, or they create a microclimate. Yeah. Little trees don't do that. But so little trees are little because they didn't grow yet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's when we're taking down big trees and planting little ones that maybe yeah. you have to think twice about taking down the big trees. Absolutely. I think it's also aesthetics that if you yeah. if you can save existing trees, they'll always look better than something right. that's planted. Yep. And I, I have think there's a perfect example of that on Middle Bush Road. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. that I want to open that can of worms now, but I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there. Yep. No. Right you are, Arnie. Well, I there are at least two places in the township where I personally got them to retain existing trees. One of them in front of a building on Schoolhouse Road. I forget that what the company is now, but you will see some existing trees in front of it. Okay. Well done, Ted. Thank you. Yeah. All right. If um if we move on, um the volunteer opportunities we kind of we, talk, we talked about that already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then uh, the warehouses idling motor vehicles. Um, I know um, Arnold, you had. You wrote you nice article. Yeah. You? Um, thank you, Walter. Um, so I sent an email last week for everyone to review before tonight's meeting, um, mm -hmm. but only for discussion tonight. And I think it would be best for me to read the email for the record and for the public to hear before we start a discussion. So I'm going to read that email right now. Uh, it'll take me a minute or two. Uh, and it's to council members and mayor. This is a proposed email that we would send to them. With all of the existing trucking warehouses in Franklin and many more being built, the Environmental Commission recommends the council require that NJDEP no idling signs be installed at all trucking warehouse sites. We also recommend that the council request that the county health department working with the DEP perform routine monitoring of these sites to assure the regulations are obeyed to limit the amount of idling vehicles exhaust. Many county health departments, including Somerset County, are already involved in this program and monitoring sites. This program incorporates educating truck drivers and truck owners, as well as facility operators and owners, which includes issuing violations when appropriate. However, if a property owner installs the appropriate DEP signs, they become exempt from fines if a truck operator is caught idling on their property. 
routinely recommendations are that the no idling signs be installed at facility entrances, bay doors, truck parking areas, and office entrances. Within this DEP program, warehouses aren't the only type of facilities monitored for idling vehicles, but we believe this would be a good place to start this program in Franklin. Tim Davis is the DEP program coordinator. The following links are for advisory purposes. I'm not going to read the links right now, but they are in the letter to the to the council. Um, many, if not most of these trucks are diesel powered. And as we know, diesel emissions, the worst kind of air pollution for motor vehicles are linked to asthma, cancer, heart disease, stroke, and neurological disorders affecting particularly the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions and children. We can't stop these trucks from coming and going, but we can limit the amount of pollution they admit. Respectfully, Franklin Township Environmental Commission. So I sent this email to Walter and Ted before I sent a, a few days before sending it to all the members. And Ted commented that he didn't think it would be necessary for signs to be placed at every warehouse dock, as I suggested, maybe every third dock. And as far as I'm concerned, our recommendations as currently written would be just an outline to the council, the details of how they were the ordinance. If they decide to move forward with this is obviously up to them. So we're giving them the DEP program manager's name and contact information in the email and they can contact the county health department to get their thoughts on this as well if they want to, and I'd be happy to provide insight based on my experience of, experience of enforcing these regulations um, as well. Ted also suggested that we send this to Mark Healy. So at this point, I would like to make a motion that the Environmental Commission, through Walter, forward this email recommendation to the mayor and council. I would second that. Thank you, okay, Stan. Ben. Okay. Can we CC Mark Healy at Ted's recommendation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what Ted recommended that we that we uh, CC Mark Healy on this. Okay. I think it's wonderful, and Arnie, I like the idea that it's a starting point, because maybe six months into this, we could talk about convenience stores, places where landscapers and big trucks are idling, and start to work broader angles on it. You just mentioned two places that when I was working for Union County, those are two types of places that we also monitor. There are several different types of places. Trucking warehouses were the main ones, but there are several others. So again, this would be a starting point. Um, you know, and this just, would you know be what we would be recommending in the for the council to put in their ordinance if they decided to go forward with us. My two cents, uh, uh, the idling is defined by the state. Am I right? Um, it's a state regulation. Right, right. And the county and, and the counties are the ones that go yes. out and do the enforcement so, for the most part. Uh, I just want to make a blurb that the three minutes tolerance is very generous. Well, that is the state regulation. Yeah. So if, yeah. um, you, if, if you think it's too generous, then you need to contact go the elsewhere DEP about it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's also difficult to measure because the it's the not difficult to measure. It's, it's they not have to be there to, for three minutes. It's not difficult to measure. We did it for several years when I was in Union County, and we were out there at six in the morning when the trucks were starting up, and uh, uh, we timer. had we had we had stopwatches, and we yeah, were watching yeah. them. Okay. Okay, because you are the expert. So, but um, three minutes is just too generous. But uh, we we have a motion on the floor. Any other comments before we uh, ask for a vote? Okay, well, it's been moved and second that the the letter as Arnold read, um, and with the mm -hmm. amendment of adding Mark Healy, uh, be approved to the next step or moving forward. It'll be sent um, to whom? To to Mark Healy, right? No, no, it's going to be sent to the mayor and council and CC Mark Healy. Okay, yeah. okay. That was yeah. that was Ted's suggestion that we okay, CC good. Mark good. Healy. 
Okay. So, so I made the motion. PC Bob Vonlocker. Yeah, yeah, Bob Vonlocker. Yeah. Okay. I will amend my motion to uh, to CC Bob Vonlocker as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so the letter, as amended, we're asking if you approve. So all in favor. Let's Walter, go. before you before you go there, I think yeah. um, you know it's not really a letter; it's an email, and I think it's oh, easier okay. to do it in email in this email You're format. Right. Um, You're right. So I would say do it that way. It's, it's okay. much quicker. Yeah. Uh, Ted, right. should this should this also be sent to Anne Marie McCarthy? I don't see any reason to send it to her at this point. It's something to get council to discuss it. Okay, I was just asking, that's fine. Okay, I'm sorry, Walter, go ahead and- All right, well, yeah, this is my, my quick question. Carry who out the, is to who get- Who on the council does the email go to? The, is it the vice mayor or- No, it's the mayor, the mayor and council. Oh, mayor and council. That, so that gets in the mayor's office and- Right. And CC Mark Healy and Bob Warnlocker. Yeah, but, okay. but but Arnie will send it, right? No, no, it's coming. No. Uh, it's coming from. So, I mean, I'll send the final Walter. thing to Walter, but oh, okay. I, I think it needs to come from Walter so we'll yeah. as the okay. chair. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Should we all be copied then? Yeah, I think it's good for us all to be copied. You know, you could. I don't, do the copies. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So the email, and you know, with the amendments to Bob Bonlocker and Mark Healy and all of the uh, EC commissioners, um, yeah, he sent from me to the mayor and council. So all in favor, let's say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed, say nay. Any abstention? Okay, wonderful though. So uh, I would expect that uh, Arnold will, you know, whatever the next steps are to get it to me and uh, Sentra so that I can send it. I'll certainly act on it, you know, real quick if I can, whenever that happens. I will get that to you as soon as I can, Walter. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everybody. Well okay. done. All right. Um, next, we're going to talk about the Plastic Ban Education Subcommittee uh, update. Oh, um, so, Maria, are you prepared to give us an update? Uh, are you the. I, I, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm going to let you finish. If you were asking me if I was prepared. Yeah, to, to sort of update everybody on where we are with this subcommittee. Okay, so I'm going to be brief. Uh, we met on May 4th uh, at 4 p.m. via Zoom. The attendees were Robin, Walter, uh, Ar Arno, and Amy Spears. Our next meeting is on Tuesday, May 25th at 5 p.m. We left the meeting, uh, everybody with different assignments. Um, Robin mentioned that she will find out what others at the local county and state level are doing, and she will share that she will look into the clean community funding to see if the town is entitled to receive funds. Arnold and Robin emphasize that our first step is to research and find what tailors and agencies at the local county and state level are doing or will do to disseminate information to avoid duplication of efforts and to keep our campaign, if any campaign is needed in France. Uh, the wording and language in alignment with the state law. Um, Arnie requested Walter to ask Ted if the town has a plan to inform the people of Franklin. Uh, Amy mentioned that Franklin Day or, and 4th of July are events where the campaign can be implemented. Um, Walter mentioned the option to create an informative four point brochure for the people of Franklin. And to that, Arnie added, uh, that considerations of language and wording alignment again need to be uh, in consideration. Amy show information related to the plastic ban that appear on the in, in the website, and I I share that I will 
we're going to investigate what some of the town retailers, restaurants, and organizations are doing to address the anti-plastic bag ban. And I put my um, findings in a, in a Google worksheet. But from all the findings, what I want to uh, mention is that uh, next week, um, there's, I, there's a seminar on May 27 about rolling out the bag ban. Everything business and government need to know. Uh, from 10 to noon via Zoom, and um, I put that in an email to the committee, but if anyone, anybody else is interested in attending, I have the time to attend, I will forward that, and the fee is $40. Um, and I call different retailers, and um, they're not ready yet. They are, uh, when I talk to them, they're concerned, they're concerned more about COVID, and um, and they're handling the situation with COVID. They're not thinking about the the anti-plastic bag. bag All yet. right. <laughs> so that's my report. And if if anybody else from the committee wants to add up to what I said or correct any um, misconstruction, <laughs> please do so. And thank you. So the, the virtual webinar on May twenty fifth or seventh. It yes, is, uh, yes. It, I can send information uh, today. To is it organized by NJEC? NJEC, yeah. uh, yes. No, but NJEC is one of the speakers, but I think it's put on by like State Chamber of Commerce at that level. Ah, oh. okay. Uh -huh. All right. I know I just want to observe that there's a, a lot of information out there. And, uh, you know, it seems that a lot of it is already pre-subscribed. What we have to do is put Franklin's stamp on it so that, you know, rather than it being thought of as a state or something else, it can be thought of as a Franklin Township uh, plan or, you know, the bags or webinar or what have you. And uh, so we just want to bring it home. So there's a lot more to do. But uh, there's a lot of info out there already. I, yeah, we just, I left we just... a message because um, um, I work in a school, and um, I guess I want to participate in the webinar, but um, I want to attend. That's what I meant. But after pay, if they allow me to pay and also to re they record it so I can see it at, later on, that will be convenient. But I'm waiting to hear from them. That's all. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. So, so thanks so much for the subcommittee and uh, Maria. I, I I believe at the last meeting, you shared your Zoom platform. We did. So, is that always available for your use, or is it just a one-time thing? No, I can use it. Okay. I'm available. Okay. Yeah. okay. Very good. It's Walter. Yeah. Um, if yeah. I could just comment on that. Sure. Um, I'm just writing something and hold on a second. So I, I, I didn't hear everything that Maria said because I had a bad connection. I was, it was sort of going in okay. and out. So I'm sorry if she might have mentioned some of this. But my thoughts are about how if we were to send an email to the mayor and council um, recommending that they look into funding, possibly from our Clean Communities Grant, to produce or to purchase and give out reusable bags at Franklin Day, if Franklin Day does come off. Yeah. And, and in each bag would be a flyer, a one-page flyer, educating people about the regulations and when they go into effect. And I would like to connect with that. I think that the it could be the flyer could be printed on the face of the bag. So wherever you go with the bag, it would contain no more plastic bag after this and this date or something along those lines, pretty much explaining. So as long as you use the bag, you are actually advertising it wherever you go. What does that sound? Well, you know, I had also thought I wanted to share. Uh, I'm so what is it we have this? square where you can use your camera or whatever to open up a website. 
I'm, I forgot the name of what do you call that? A QR, co the QR code. QR code. Yes, QR code. We should incorporate that as well. I, I don't know how, what it costs, but everybody has a phone nowadays. And if you don't have, they don't have to do a lot to access it. You know, they might read it and uh, it might be, it may be in addition to a flyer or it might be instead of the flyer, but. I think we should consider the QR code as well. I don't know. Well, I think the is. first step is contacting the council yeah. and, and exactly. making this suggestion to them, recommendation, yeah. and see what their thoughts are on it. And yeah. then, um, you know, we can, you know, how they proceed as to whether they want to print something on the bag. Um, I'm thinking they're going to probably more likely want to put something about Franklin Township on it. Um, yeah. advertising well, something for Franklin Township. I like your idea, Stan. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if there's enough room on there for everything to go on there and what the cost is of printing more stuff on there. I don't know how that works. If it can be done, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I would say I <laughs> you don't need to tell the general public very much just that they better have such a bag i think that educating uh, stores uh, the the supermarkets will know but smaller stores uh, what they should be doing uh, is i think is probably the biggest educational uh, role I, agree, I think I, I think that's what this webinar on the 27th is really working to write a plan how to get to the small store. Yeah. I, I, so what do you guys think about step one about this of um, uh, sending an email to the council about um, finding we, some money for this? We uh, don't need to, to move bank. on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm all for it. Um, I, I, I think I think it might be wise if we said that we'd like to find some money for this as part of an overall campaign on public awareness, because it's going to end up being more than just the bag and granted, we don't have a budget for anything, but I think the town needs to be aware right, that because it... we're, we're going to have to make all the residents and the businesses aware of this and it really is a town initiative where we're going to help support the town as an ec it's going to be also take out containers right yes yep it's lots of things. this this will uh, impact uh, the delivery food well again robin i think that's an excellent idea about um, public awareness i think that's that should be a part of an email that we send to the yeah. mayor and council yeah um, that this that the bags are just one piece, but it's a yes. piece that requires budget and planning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe you and I can work on uh, um, some kind of email to send to sure. the uh, sure. to the council. Okay. Great idea. Not that you and I have anything else to do. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So we want to. A motion to move forward, as you um, suggested, uh, Arnold. I'll make a motion uh, that we send an email. We prepare an email, making a recommendation to the council um, that uh, they see if they can come up with some money to uh, purchase some bags, some reusable bags, um, as promote that part of a promotional public awareness. Um, the I issue, um, for, you know, I'm sort of stumbling here, um, but to be able to pass out these, um, reusable bags at Franklin day. Yeah. And if for any reason, Franklin day doesn't happen, we'll find other opportunities in the next 12 months to do this. Right. There might even be, there might even be a limited 4th of July day. Right. Um, so that's that's still a possibility i understand yes um, a possibility so you know and there are well, there are places like the library and the food bank that would be naturals for this yes yes yeah. all right mm -hmm. well good okay so uh so 
Arnold, would you just restate it again? No, no. <laughs> Ted, did you get what I said? Can you can you read what I said and fill in the blanks that I, of what I didn't say? A. Schmidt suggested emailing council, asking them to fund reusable bags to be given out at Franklin Day. And I didn't get in uh, with a with a flyer. If they want to ask uh, how many. Well, that's that again, that's going to be up to them as to how much money they can they can come up with. And we're not going to put a dollar amount on it. That's uh, again up to them. And this is again, Ted, for public awareness and public information. I guess they would derive the number based on estimated visitor. They would derive the money on based on what money they can come up with and how much if they were to come up with, let's say, $10,000 and I'm just throwing that number out there. It could be 2000 yeah. or $2, whatever those, whatever that dollar amount would be able to purchase. Yeah, it and depends more... on what the cost is per bag if bought right. in bulk and right. numbers. Yeah. Ted, would we be out of line if we suggested the clean streets? funding clean communities i mean clean communities yeah right yeah i think that that's something that i mentioned um yeah, I didn't put that in just to remind people that there is a particular there's money out there yeah yeah, yeah. okay great okay so again do is bob von locker to be copied on this as well is this the mayor and council with a copy of bob von locker and uh and um mark healy yeah, I think that Bob Warnlocker, obviously, since he's the big budget guy, um, <laughs> that he would certainly be copied on this. I'm not sure. If, yeah. Well, Mark Healy is our our township liaison, so I. Why yeah, not copy him on have planning aspects? So. Right, but he's still our liaison. But if if you don't think it's necessary to copy him, then it's one less thing that he has to read. Well. I suppose it never hurts to copy one more person. Sure. All right. And that's why we do emails. They're, they're real easy, so to speak. Well, great. Okay, so we have the motion on the floor. And do we get a second? Can I get a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and second that the uh, oh, we okay. EC sent a, a, a email to the council and the mayor and uh you know copies to mark healy and bob von locker regarding i won't try to be specific on the wording but uh providing funding to prepare bags uh you know for the purpose of education and awareness uh to the public on franklin day and this is just a, a small part of an overall uh, educational initiative I, I don't know whether you want those are the words but I think that basically captures what we, we propose to send forward. So can we get a second? Robin second. seconded it. I did that. Oh, she did, I'm you, sorry. You okay. were just repeating and but just yeah. say those in favor, <laughs> okay? All right, thank you. So all in favor, let us hear you say aye. 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 Okay, aye. any opposed? No. Any abstentions? All right, good. Uh, and uh, Robin and um, Arnold will draft that. And uh, for them, I don't, obviously, I don't think it would be as difficult as it would be for some of the rest of us. So, so thank you. And if we move along, um, we have here forest management, um, uh, I guess, uh, Assembly Bill 4843 update. I think, Ted, were you? Uh, sort of giving us uh, uh, what was happening with that? Well, I don't have anything uh, new on it. Um, Emil DeVito told me that New Jersey Conservation Foundation will shortly be sending out comments on it. And I haven't, I keep meaning to go back and um, read all of the bills because there's four or five it's a package of four or five bills. 40, uh, 4843 is the one requiring 
a uh, oh, forest, a forest forest plan. management plan for for any forest of twenty five acres or more. But you can four and forty eight forty. I didn't even realize I'm not hearing it through this. Forty eight forty. I'm not hearing it through this. I think it's okay. 40, you should have told me. What? I'm sorry. We. We need to be on. Arnie is talking with someone. No, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so, well, the, the next one, uh, which I have a few notes on somewhere, um, yeah, forty-eight forty-four Senate thirty-three fifty provides that local government cannot require that it must approve a forest stewardship plan for a, a tract of five acres or more. And my main comment was that this would seem to preclude um, local government from uh, approving or disapproving a forest management plan for its own forests, which would seem rather <laughs> illogical. But, Okay. But this one obviously is just follows the uh, yeah, 4843. Uh, and then I know that there's one, I haven't read the bill yet, which requires that the state carry out um, prescribed burns on something like 50,000 acres in the Pine Barrens and 10,000 acres elsewhere in the state each year. And wow. I haven't read the, it yet, but the, the obvious comment is that how many, how much they do should depend on how great the need is. And it also depends on the weather. <laughs> if you, yeah. if, uh, weather conditions have to be very specific to carry out such a, a burn and Tara can tell you about that because we had one at the, the John Clyde grasslands. Um, but suppose in a, a given season, and the season is sort of January to March, uh, they didn't have the right weather to carry out any great amount. So, uh, I haven't read the bill yet, and I want to really read the bills and know exactly what they say. Now I have to go find, um, I think it was something from the Sierra Club that had links to the bills. Okay. Very good. All right. So thanks for keeping us up on that. and. Uh, all right, if we move along uh, to old business update, um, if we think, go through. I think we touched on a lot of these already. Yeah, we yeah. have. Um, so we have one candidate for the Environmental Stewardship Award, and we have to decide soon how we're going to engage or contact them. As I remember in the past, did we not for groups have them come in and share what we think, you know, their worthy solo project, uh, I mean, environmental project is. That's the way we normally do it, did it. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll be looking forward to, uh, to contacting that particular school that Paul had brought up. Okay. I can do and, that. Okay. Well, it's, it's right we in the neighborhood. Yeah, all right. If, I can give them a call or knock on the door. All right, fantastic. You know, I'm sure they'd be glad to share it with us. Yeah. And um, if we go down real quickly, we oppose the fossil fuel transport. I guess we got that through uh, an email, and um, we did respond to. Was it another community uh, that we thought that they, they had mistaken us for? <laughs> For another, that was my, uh, my suggestion uh, that they uh, it would obviously be much more to the point for Franklin Township in Gloucester County. Yeah, to respond. Mm -hmm. 
So did, did we have uh, Jessica send something directly to them? I don't remember. Well, I think we did send a short email to the respondent suggesting they contact Franklin Township there in, uh, in Gloucester County. All right, so stream cleanup 2022. Uh, Stan, what are you thinking? Are you still asking? It's 21. <laughs> Is that too early? <laughs> I just, I have some other stuff to do now, right? I just found All right, okay, no stuff. problem. You know, this is not. No, it yeah, does we, require a lot of yeah, behind the scene of, work. It does. Yes, but, you know, yeah, it will happen, don't worry. Bring it up in six Thank months. <laughs> Thank you. No. Okay, uh, stormwater ordinance, green infrastructure. I think we, we know that's on the table. Uh, post pandemic EV Township uses plan. Um, I, I believe that, you know, we are not leaving that alone and hopefully it may materialize uh, into something that uh, we want and that it's, that it's useful. It's, it's been announced that um, hmm. inspections on site will resume June 1st. So ah. uh, we're getting. Okay. Uh, for that particular thing, we're getting to the post pandemic period. Yeah. Okay. But they, uh, you know, basically the, the three vehicles that normally would be assigned to the field assessors that go out and do these uh, site visits that they have been being used by the uh, class three special police officers to yeah. go from the municipal building to the various schools that they ostensibly guard against active shooters. Uh, and when the assessors uh, start using those vehicles again, then the special officers hold police cars. <laughs> Wow. Well, so not electric. Okay, yeah. but whichever vehicle makes more miles, replace it with electric. <laughs> that's how well, that's the type of things. I think the a point there is that the the uh, special police going out to from the municipal building where they pick up a gun to the schools. That'll be very limited driving with non-electric vehicles, whereas field assessors will do a great deal more driving, so we will be on yeah. much better use of the vehicles. Of course. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, the Green Roof Roofs Initiative, I mean, in terms of the warehouses and you know, well, we site plans and things like everything. that. Do we yeah. have nothing, any updates? Nothing, nothing new at this time. No. Yeah. Okay. And uh, sustainability of the grant coordinator, we I discussed we, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the coyote program is postponed, so uh, this is, uh, the state this still is... has it. Last I talked to Arnold, haven't decided to go <laughs> do any person to person type presentations yet. That is correct. Is that right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And Franklin Day 2021 is I don't know, I guess it's more than a rumor or <laughs> but it's I keep hearing it, but I, I think it will happen. More. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because the well, CDC... I have our banner. Yeah, we do have our banner. Right. <laughs> the, okay. the CDC is uh, uh ad adopting scientific uh evidence mm -hmm. into uh, okay. practice so good well you know um, i guess governor murphy is being a little more restrictive than, than the cdc but we'll see okay um so thank you so much and we are down to we want to open to the public again you know motion um, so moved second they move in a second that we open the meeting to the public all in favor say aye Aye. 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 Aye
Okay, open the meeting to the public. Frank Reporter, you are now unmuted for the second time tonight. I'm good, thanks very much. Thank you for right. listening. I move to close. Public. Second. We move to second that we, we close the public discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Walter, so, for, our next, our next, yeah, for our next meeting, I, I'm i not going to be there. I am oh, moving right. that weekend right before. Wow. And I'll, I'll be lucky if I can find my right hand, let alone <laughs> time to sit. Be right, right on the other there. side of the left. <laughs> <laughs> so but, uh, um, if you'll forgive what? me, I'll try to take care of all my assignments, but that oh, okay. would be literally my first day in the house. So all I'm right. Gonna, Try to be well, let me ask. Me. Let me ask a question. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm the last one to learn. But it, you say Diane is no longer a member of the EC. She sent in a letter of resignation. Yes. Oh. After 17 years on the EC. Wow. So we will. We are looking to recruit behind her then. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't know. I I guess I must have missed that. Did she share it with all of us or? Oh yeah. Oh, yes, she did. Okay, I must have missed it on my my fault. Well, but sorry to see you go. You see the very valuable member. All right. And so that means that, you know, as we're talking around and and we know people I have, who are interested. Um, I have one technical item which regards uh this account. Uh oh yeah. WebEx, yeah. Okay, because the reason why it didn't work out today because uh, apparently due to the restriction on uh, licensing uh, for WebEx, um, Township has uh, eliminated some of the master accounts. So there was uh, me and Jessica and they just picked me probably because some of the leaders in the Township don't like me, uh, so, um, but I have not been told that my account has been closed. So uh, when I tried to open it today, uh, it was telling me that the password is wrong. So I uh, wanted to reset it uh, and I didn't receive the code. Uh, again, I haven't been told even by the, the robot that, hey, you are no longer here, uh, but this is how I learned from Jennifer, uh, the lady from IT who is on duty at this moment. Yeah. Um, but uh, Robert uh, McQueen was able to open up the room. Uh, he made me panelist um, and then uh, host. So that's how it worked out. So um, what do you think? Shall we uh, say that we want to have two accounts or what we can do? I was just thinking if we have one, and let's say from Jessica and Jessica will give me access, you know, uh, I can use it, but, um, you know, it is linked to email address, which means that um, should I need, we need to reset password or something, the reset will go to her email. So it's a little bit kind of weirdy. I know. think we should have two people with full yes. access in case one of them has a migraine headache. Yes, <laughs> of course. What, what, I, what I was saying that we could have one that can be shared, but it's not 100% shared. Wow. It's like, you know, uh, you give me your username and password to your Amazon account, essentially, so that we can both use the same account, you know. Yeah. Except of that there, there are no money going on here in with WebEx. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of my questions, you know, what, how can we prevent this from happening again? And I had no idea that it was behind IT changing up things and not informing you. Uh, that's, that's even worse, so to speak. Yeah. So next meeting, where where will we be, we be? Well, I need to connect with Bob McQueen, but I need to have uh, some backing of what we as a committee, uh, as a commission, what we want. Okay. I agree with Ted that we should have two independent accounts. Yeah. Does that cost them money? I mean, uh, is that or just more work? Uh, I think there is some money involved. Okay. You know, I what remember those days when we were protesting that we want to have Zoom. We were told that uh, WebEx offered them deal. 
yeah. introductory deal. I guess the deal is over. Um, okay, they have to figure it out. You know, I mean, I got yeah. used to WebEx. I would not complain about WebEx anymore. But uh, we need yeah. to have two uh, master accounts. Yeah. Well, well, I had a lot of trouble uh, getting into meetings uh, through WebEx. Um, uh, through Safari, and I finally found that I could do it more reliably uh, through Google Chrome. That's what I do. Okay. Or Microsoft Edge, perhaps. Yeah, I, that's what I use. Well, great. Well, why don't we uh, we ask for two master accounts and uh, let them push back? But uh, if that's what we would well, desire, I just point out to them that. We need, we need to have a way of having at least two people able to open a meeting in case one yeah. of them is incapacitated. And, Absolutely. Um, it's not, we don't have to specify exactly how this is to be achieved, but this is what needs to be achieved. Yeah. I'm planning to query Bob McQueen tomorrow about what happened and what him explain to me. Oh, okay. Wonderful. All right. Okay, so, so I don't have to contact him, you will? Okay. All right, good. That right? Okay. Well, I think I I think Walter say could contact Bob McQueen and ex express make this point directly and Okay. I will sort of ask as if I didn't hear this out. Okay explanation from Stan. Uh, okay. Very good. That's what I'll do. I'll I'll try to do that uh, tonight. Yeah. The list of emails that Walter has to send is a lot. <laughs> well, that's okay. All right. Very good. Uh, thanks everybody. So are we ready to close the meeting? I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Okay. Get a second. <laughs>